What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. It's weird doing my intro not being able to sprint forward while I do that. I felt like a big component of the intro was missing, but I definitely just had some in my tooth from lunch. This is embarrassing. We good now? Hope that you guys are all doing absolutely outstanding today. We are on our way back from one of the local print shops I work with for enthusiasts and what well, we just picked up what is a potential new product coming soon. You guys like thermals? I love thermals and I know that cold weather is upon us. More hoodies will be coming back, flannels might be coming, and thermals might be coming. What do you guys think about that? 6040 polycon blend super soft. Food for thought, I know we can't wear short sleeves all year round, although I wish we could, or at least those of us that live in the Northeast. But anyway, yes, we are cruising in the 2020 Denali Duramax right now and we're gonna be doing an interesting video today talking about we're comparing the differences and similarities from the first generation L5P or the second generation 4th gen or the first generation L5P whatever perspective it is that you want to look at versus now the fifth generation Duramax or the second generation L5P uh, so yeah we're actually on our way over to Lifebridge Automotive right now as they have one and we're gonna use that as the candidate for today's conversation so meet you guys over there I'm not asking you to change a thing I'm just trying to catch a wave with you Before we get in way too deep you don't have Life to is good, yes. Yes, I totally agree, my friend. I totally, totally agree. We woke up today, and that is, at the end of the day, what makes a day good or bad. All right, so we have a date with a certain L5P that is silver. Is that it right there? I think that's our boy right there. Dude, those pants are sick. Oh, nice high country. Touches my heart. Very special, those body style Duramaxes. The other truck that we have a date with, AKA the 2020, back here somewhere. All right, we're stashing this one back here. And now speaking of that body style Duramax, which is uh, the fourth generation style, I want to give you guys a quick update as to a is to, I have not been able to really talk that well lately, but it's all good, I'm embracing it. We're people, we make mistakes, it happens from time to time. About DDG number four. All the entries are in the hands safely with the giveaway administrator. They are doing what they do best, what we hire them for to conduct legitimate legal giveaways. We don't run like those randomized raffle through live stream whatever's through enthusiasts because they're actually illegal. Whereas we run legalized, hey Josh. <laughs> to everybody on YouTube, just like that. Dude, you gotta say you're sorry. Look, you did it first last time. Not what? Not to not to my whole YouTube channel. Oh, that's true. Do you feel bad now? Yeah, I didn't realize you were gonna turn it around. Josh loves you guys. Don't worry about Josh. Josh, Josh is a nice guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> so as I was saying, it's all conducted through a third-party licensed legal sweepstakes administrator company. So they'll do a random draw and then they will contact the winner. So that should happen in roughly about one week's time. I'm estimating around the 19th to the 22nd of September. An announcement will come out for that. So stay tuned and just following that, DDG number five will be going live, which we're excited about. But I don't really want to drown out the experience of giving away DDG number four and then launching number five beforehand rather Rather, I really want to focus on that amazing experience that one of you is going to have rather than just rushing into the next one I mean, I don't really see what the rush is rather I really want to make the focus of the enthusiast giveaways about the experience of changing your life I want it to be all about that moment and capturing it. It's almost like a wedding You don't want to really miss any of the moments on that day You want to embrace and serenade all the emotion of that day And that's what we want to capture before we launch number five But number five is coming and I can't wait to figure out who's gonna be taking my baby home, the LML. Oh God, I love that truck so much. And I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the 2020. Check out what we got in here now, boys. We have nice all weather floor mats. These are OEM GMC all weather floor mats. Super nice. They definitely copied WeatherTech without a question of a doubt. Kind of like all the other manufacturers copied amp steps except for GMC. Oh. That just get awkward. So yeah, they're kind of going out and stealing ideas from the aftermarket because they're not original enough to come up with them themselves. But uh, yeah, basically I'm getting out after all my crap talking here. These are actually really nice. I think they were like uh, 89 bucks for the front and there was, it was like a hundred bucks for the back. Then back ones are pretty slick. Uh, they go literally all the way up and all the way back. You actually had to take out this little cargo tray to get the mat back here. You can see it literally goes all the way up and under. It did require some trimming on that side to get this little cargo box to mount back up. I guess they want to offer the option for for no cargo box, and then if you have the cargo, cargo, blah, blah, blah. cargo box, you can do a little bit of trimming, uh, but that's pretty nice. I like it, I like it a lot. Feels good now though, because I get a lot of paranoia using the carpeted mats because they wear out so fast and your heel just like digs into it, makes it look like crap. I like to preserve those to the best of my ability. Damn, look at Jamie's Cummins. That thing just looks so sick. It's crazy how the same wheel and tire setup on that truck looks so much bigger than on that truck. 
Wow. Now, speaking of size differences, let's go grab this 2018 L5P because we, we got some differences and some observations that we need to discuss. It's been spider season around here, boys. These spiders are relentless in Lancaster County. We have like these mayflies that are these super annoying bugs that grow and spawn right out of the river that's kind of right around the corner here. And uh, well, the spiders, look at that, is kind of like Grubhub. It's like their mobile food delivery service. So every night they make these ridiculous webs. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would know that I got this spider bug that loves to just hang out on my front porch considered burning my house down to get rid of the spider but you know what he actually eats a lot of the mosquitoes that like to eat me so I kind of feel like we're boys welcome to the 2018 L5P that we're gonna be using in today's comparison video nice truck nice truck oh it's about to be a hoedown lowdown hoedown showdown I don't know is that him right there Yep, definitely seems to be the guy. I'm telling you what, these spiders around here are relentless and, and I got, what do they call it, arachnophobia? I would say that I'm a candidate of this, but I'm trying to embrace them because mosquitoes love me more than my wife. It's not even like I could use her as like a bait and switch. It's, it's kind of messed up. But anyway, guys, yes, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the second generation L5P compared to the first generation or the fourth gen versus the fifth gen Duramax. I don't wanna go out here and state in the obvious, but anytime the big OEMs introduce a new year, make, model, whatever, the previous generation kind of gets shadowed a little bit and everybody's attention quickly diverts over to the new trucks but i feel like there is a lot of value that can be had in potentially buying something that's either slightly used certified pre-owned or even a leftover but those are becoming few and far between for opportunities so now that i've had my 2024 about let's just say july august september it's about a month and a half's time i put about 3500 miles on it it's gone through uh just some wheels tires lifted it up a little bit tinted it didn't really do much more than that that. And I had experience not with a first generation L5P, but I've been around them enough to where I feel like I have some legitimacy of conversation. It is very similar to my LML Duramax that one of you is going to be taking home. So GM for the 2020 totally redesigned the truck from the ground up. The only thing that they really maintained was the powertrain. The transmission's got four more gears. It's a 10 speed versus a six speed. The chassis is wider, longer, and the truck sits taller. It's got way more room on the interior. The cab was completely redesigned. It's got a whole bunch of new technology. It's got the multi-pro tailgate, which is nice, but I wouldn't say is the craziest thing in the entire world. It does boast a boatload of LEDs all around, which is nice. If we were comparing GMC to GMC, obviously those features would be comparable, but all around, I'd say it's a vastly different feeling truck versus that of its current generation. Back when this truck was brand new, this is an LB7, an 03 LB7, all of the manufacturers offered roughly the same size trucks. Fords were pretty tight in the interior, Dodges were pretty tight in the interior, and GMs were probably probably the tightest on the interior. Then like around that like 07, 08 time frame, Ford and Dodge kind of up the ante a little bit. In my personal opinion, it wasn't really until a about 08 for Ford and 2011 for Dodge to when they kind of took a step up to introduce a bigger interior. And then the LMM was kind of a step up in the right direction, but it seemed like General Motors always kind of held on to that intimate interior space. And I could say the same stands true for the 2018 that's here behind me or the fourth generation GM body style. Whereas the 2020 is vastly different than that of its previous generations or the portfolio of products that were introduced because it's way bigger on the inside compared to like, let's just say the 6.7 that I just brought onto the YouTube channel, that's not that truck there, but the one that we just bought that's at Peach Bottom Auto Body, those trucks are massive on the inside. And that's the first topic of discussion that I wanna begin with is the interior ambiance is way more enjoyable. You don't kind of feel like you're in a Jeep Wrangler. Some of you that have owned Jeeps or know what Jeeps are like on the inside know exactly what I'm talking about. These trucks are a lot tighter on the inside. You definitely feel like you're more confined. Whereas in these trucks, you feel like you can really kind of kind of spread out, if you know what I'm saying. You gotta get air where air needs to be at times. Now being that we're inside of the trucks 99.9% .9 of the time, interacting with the mechanical capabilities, I'd say that interior comfort and refinement is very, very important. Now yes, we could get into the fact that like the, you know, the infotainment display is potentially a little bit outdated compared to like Dodge, but I'd say that the overall aromatic feel on the inside is extremely nice. You don't only feel that from the front seats, but you also feel that from the back, because the back seats ended up getting about three inches more leg room, which is super, super nice. So opening this truck up, you actually feel like you have a very clear pathway to get inside. Whereas when you open up one of the previous generations, it is arguably a little bit tighter. And same thing goes for the front seats. Getting up in here is kind of like, you know, it's doable. You, you kind of have to thread the needle, but jumping into one of these trucks, 
you got a lot more room. And that is something that I really enjoy about the new body style. Now, standing next to this truck versus this truck, although it's got a little bit bigger wheels on it, so it's not one-to-one -one comparison, even this thing in its stock form stands about four inches taller than that of the previous generation truck. So if you're looking to buy a vehicle that's maybe going to be used in areas that are somewhat tighter to navigate, I'd almost say that this would be your better option because it's less vehicle to move around. Now, the overall feel of like, let's just say closing the doors like I just did, feels very similar. It's not like these things feel clunky or loose compared to these things feeling not clunky or loose or whatever the case might be. Nothing really major standing out there. Now, I'd say another big factor in the discussion is price point. You can find those for a lot cheaper than you're going to be able to find those. So if you have a specific budget in mind, I'd say that if you want to take advantage of the power and capability torque delivery of the L5P Duramax, and you're just really concerned about that, you don't really care about any of the nuances of the new body style, then that's kind of like a no-brainer. But if your budget allows and you want to get into something that is, let me just say, way easier to tow with. Yes, I just said that with utter confidence, the towing capability on these and the ease of towing is so much simpler than these. And that's pretty much solely attributed to the fact that it's got 10 speeds in the transmission versus six. And the biggest difference that you notice there are basically just the gearing changes. So the gearing ratios in that transmission are far different in that transmission. And although the power delivery systems, the powertrains are the exact same horsepower power and torque, the way that power is put to the ground in this truck is vastly different than that truck. And in turn, the behavior and the interaction of the truck from a driver's seat perspective is drastically different. I tow a 25 foot gooseneck trailer with a generally a truck on the back at let's just say an average load capacity of like 10 to 11,000 pounds. And this truck makes it seem a lot easier than that truck because of its lack of dependency on the turbo. Now, of course, they're turbo diesels, so every truck depends on the turbo, but they're way shorter gears compared to that one. So it's not like you're really waiting for that boost delivery to occur. Rather, you have a way shorter gear, and it's kind of like the sprocket example on a bicycle. If you can bring yourself back to the days when you were racing your friend on your mountain bike and they were on their BMX bike, well, when you shifted those gears and you went to the smaller sprockets, you went a lot faster. And it's the same concept for the new transmission, which makes towing that much more enjoyable. And on the topic of towing, if you're a frequent tower, that truck makes it so much easier than that truck because of the technology packages that it has. For instance, you throw the turn signal on and it shows you your blind spot. It's pretty nice. Now, I've been towing for years and one could argue I'm an old soul and I don't need that stuff. And honestly, we could all tow if we have experience without that stuff. But once you have that stuff, you kind of realize how important and nice that stuff is to have. Does that make sense? Some stuff like that. How dare you do Alright. Here we go, Josh, a guy that started how to be a YouTuber right here. Good position. Should I move forward more? Should I move back? Behind the middle? Pretty much, yeah. Does that look good? Touch both the hood scoops. <laughs> <laughs> We're curious. Which Generally is better? curious here. Which one is better? That's crazy. I feel like a midget next to this thing. I feel like I'm yeah. decent compared to this one. Any other positions? I think that's good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do. GM trucks. <laughs> How dare you do so then the next big question is ride quality. I drove that thing home a thousand miles and that was when I got my first impressions on it from Illinois to Pennsylvania. And during the moment, I actually felt as if the truck rode better, but that's probably because I was accustomed to uh, a lifted truck with bigger wheels. So driving with the skinnier tires, stock tires and stock ride height suspension, I might've just thrown me off from what my norm was. Uh, but then I thought about it. I was like, but does it really actually ride better than the previous? generation and then I honestly thought and I attributed it all to placebo effect the truck is a lot bigger I don't think on paper it weighs much more than these if anything at all so your mind's kind of tricking you into thinking that it's a heavier truck so it's more of a plush ride but at the end of the day I'd say it's probably about the same call that one like net neutral and then for the guys that are going to keep these trucks completely stock all the time for the entire duration of their ownership cycle the big question is fuel economy going back to the gearing conversation if the gearing is different you should be able Able to in turn ride at on the highway a lower rpm keeping the motor from consuming more fuel. And well, that is true. In my experience in an L5P, I saw 18 miles to the gallon on the little info readout on the dash cluster, whereas on that thing, I saw 21. Now, I know that that is not the quantitative method of calculating fuel economy. Rather, it's doing it by gallons consumed from a full tank to 
a certain area on the fuel gauge, which I actually haven't done. So don't hold me to the factual point of better fuel economy here. But I'd say that General Motors would say that in theory, it is supposed to get better fuel economy because of the fact that, well, it has different gearing ratios in the transmission and in the rear end, which would then in turn increase the fuel economy. I obviously have no place to talk about fuel economy now, especially because it's got uh, two foot in diameter wheels and they're 14 inches wide. And yeah, you get the point. Now, now the one thing that I had to show you guys that I got super comedic relief out of is the exhaust note. Check this out. Bone baby stock L5P. <laughs> All right, now, guys, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Whoa, 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 here we go. Brace yourselves. Yeah, I know I got you excited there, but uh, sad to say, there's no difference. It's still like quieter than it was. And I would know because uh, I can't hear it because they bite me all the time. C-A-R-A-V-E-O. First name Ryan, middle name Bandito. My flow frio, 10 degrees below. My stilo be colder than the Eskimos. Don't ask me though, because I know it very well. Living like a fairy tale, in case you could barely tell. This beat's harder than me inside of a rare Chevelle. Trying to spark a pair of L's while I park it parallel. Now, as we return this L5P to its desired resting place, I did want to just briefly touch on the fact that although these interiors are smaller, I believe the factory bench sheets up front are actually softer. GM, without question of a doubt, changed the material composition from these, which are softer, to the newer trucks. And although you do have a lot more room in the interior, and I'm talking guys like, what's gonna happen here? Fresh air, fresh air. I feel like SpongeBob, except the water. Although in the newer trucks, you literally feel it in terms of headroom. You feel it in room here, just like with your shoulders. I mean, I'm a medium guy, as I like to say, I wear a medium shirt. I weigh 168 pounds. I feel like I'm contained in this interior, let alone some of the bigger individuals. Let's just say 2XL guys. I don't feel like you'd be all that comfortable. Just in terms of your overall reach room, stretch room, all of that, you just feel like you have more space for your legs. You feel like you have more space in t to the wheel. But just in general, it's a lot bigger, but the seats, on the first generation are definitely a lot softer. And I can say the same thing goes for the LML. Now the 2020 seats are breaking in. They're better than what they were, but I'll tell you what, like my ace was kind of sore in the drive home when we first bought it because the seats really weren't all that soft. All right, so we're back at the shop now. I did stop at Advanced Auto Parts quick to try and pick up a part that we need for Long Bed Larry, which is unfortunately no longer stocked at Advanced Auto Parts. So that kind of crushed my plan for the day to get prepared to do uh, the install, the stuff that's in front of me that I haven't revealed to you guys yet but will be probably revealed in like the next video or two depending on kind of how things roll about which i'm very excited for which i'm very excited for get pumped about where long bed larry is going yeah he's he hasn't changed since uh that video went live stuff is still going on and things but there are some parts in there for the power stroke because we're going to be stopping down at peach bottom auto body to check up on the power stroke progress which i'm very very excited about so we had to pick them up quick but yeah unfortunately i wasn't able to get the part for this which might actually delay my schedule of finishing this build depending on how fast it can ship from its warehouse. Milwaukee Tools, that's sponsorship. I'm waiting. All right, boys, we're back at the house. I, I kind of just had to do that because I didn't get to do it this morning. It's kind of like an essential pillar of the vlog was missing and it was running right out of that, that door right there. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird, but I just felt like I had to do it. So anyway, yeah, we're back at the house. I have a date with that lawnmower and uh, that lawn and that lawn and my back lawn. Uh, especially because it's like not a gazillion degrees out, which is really nice. But yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap us up for today. LML's still sitting here looking super pretty. We're gonna have that thing detailed spick and span for whoever the new owner is. Well, that person might be you. Wifey's Jeep's got 7,800 miles on it. Uh, yeah, we drive that thing a lot. Denali parked super lazily. Minimax is back, by the way. So I didn't really go into details about having the Minimax back. If you guys can recall when we did the tow video, if you caught that one, we had the trailer hooked up to the 2020. We picked up the Minimax from Diesel Works in Mount Joy, PA, where we had basically found that, no, boys, no, the head studs did not go. Did that, did that rhyme? I, I don't even know. Did that rhyme? Maybe. But the head studs did not go in in Old Faithful here. The Minimax is a freaking brick ship house, which is astonishing because we've got over 40 runs on it at the strip and down the dirt drags. But uh, ironically from that burnout that was in Mexico that went for a long time, we had caused two catastrophic failures of two completely unrelated parts. One of those parts being one of the low pressure fuel 
return lines on the front left injector. And then the other one was the AC line that ran up and over the turbo, which uh, we ended up rerouting down past the turbo around on the firewall and back to the, what is that, the expansion canister thing for the HVAC. And of course we installed a new fitting for the low pressure line, but the Minimax is back and better than ever. I mean, it's ready to rip. Now that the temperatures are getting a little bit lower here in Pennsylvania, I would like to get back to the strip to see if we can knock out a 10 second run, well high 10 second run, but get into the 10s with the Minimax. That's kind of the goal on that truck before it kind of evolves into anything else. I don't really know exactly what the plan is for that truck because it's already just kind of such a beast. I was considering stacking it and doing some other little minor kind of aesthetic mods, but really the only step with that truck yet is just to kind of build the motor and get it to make a whole hell of, whole, whole, a, whole hell of a lot more horsepower. So that's kind of the update on the Minimax. It is back. We haven't really been making content with it much, but guys, don't stress. It's there. It's there. And it's better than ever. I love that truck. Would you just... Would you just look at that thing? Would you, would you just, ugh, it's beautiful. And it was really a big inspiration for us going polished on the Denali, which I'm actually kind of really enjoying. I know I said that maybe I wouldn't stick around with the polish thing for long because I really like black on white. You know, I think it looks really good, but maybe it kind of grew on me. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff going on. I love it all. I'm super stoked that you guys are excited about the Ford. Super Duty Sam, Super Duty Sam. Do you, do you like Super Duty Sam? If you guys can come up with a better one, I'm willing, but Super Duty Sam kind of kind of seems to make a lot of sense. Maybe we're sticking with like the whole naming configuration thing. If you're new to the channel and and you decided to subscribe, I appreciate it. We've gained like 15,000 subscribers last month, which is awesome. Um, 65, actually we're at, well, 71,000 subscribers this year thus far, and uh, it's very humbling to say the least. I'm so grateful to see that number grow. You know, the number is cool and all. I think it's more of like a quality versus quantity thing. You know, as much as everybody sees a number and then they set a new number threshold, I don't really look at it like that. I'm like, hey, look, I've got an amazing community of people that have decided to follow along, which is super humbling, and I just appreciate every single one of you at the end of the day. That's kind of how I look at it. The number thing isn't as important to me because I feel like a quality relationship is better than just some shallow number, in my opinion. So, my like week, I love you guys. Do you the best again. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next upload. Have a good night. Have a good, have a good night. What the hell was I thinking? See you guys.